Dear loving Father in heaven, we thank you once again for giving us the privilege of life. We are grateful to be among the living. We ask, Father, for consecration. Of our own selves, we are weak, we have our struggles, and we want you to strengthen us and give us the grace that comes through your word. We read in your word that your the word of God is powerful, quick, sharper than any two-edged sword. So we pray, Lord, that this, your powerful word, shall encourage us and strengthen us and give us grace that we may live to the glory of your holy name, that we may have power to be, become the sons of God. We pray, Lord, that you grant to us the gift of your spirit. Especially, Lord, I pray that you put your words in my mouth, that the words that will be spoken will be spirit and life to all who would be listening. Thank you, Lord, for I know you've heard and that you would answer. In Jesus' name I prayed. Amen. Conflict and Courage, April 9 A Contradictory Report And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel. Numbers chapter 13 verse 32 the Lord commanded Moses to send men to search the land of Canaan, which he would give unto the children of Israel. After they had spoken of the fertility of the land, all but two spoke very discouragingly of their ability to possess it. As the people listened to this report, they gave vent to their disappointment in bitter reproaches and wailing. They did not wait to reflect and reason that God, who had brought them out thus far, would certainly give them the land. Caleb urged his way to the front, and his clear ringing voice was heard above all the clamor of the multitude. He opposed the cowardly views of his fellow spies, which had weakened the faith and courage of all Israel. He commanded the attention of the people, and they hushed their complaints for a moment to listen to him. But as he spoke, the unfaithful spies interrupted him, crying, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. These men, starting upon a wrong course, set their hearts against God, against Moses and Aaron, and against Caleb and Joshua. Every step they advanced in this wrong direction made them firmer in their design to discourage every attempt to possess the land of Canaan. They distorted the truth in order to carry their baneful purpose. They represented the climate as being unhealthful and all the people of giant stature. This was not only an evil report, but a lying one also. It was contradictory, for if the land was unhealthy and had eaten up the inhabitants, how was it that they had attained to such massive proportions? When men in responsible positions yield their hearts to unbelief, there are no bounds to the advance they will make in evil. If only the two men had brought the evil report and all the ten had encouraged them to possess the land in the name of the Lord, they would still have taken the advice of the two in preference to the ten because of their wicked unbelief. Amen. The title of our devotion for today is A Contradictory Report. This is the story of the ten and the twelve spies that were sent to spy the land of Canaan. At this time, the children of Israel were not far away from Canaan, the land that the Lord had promised to their father and to them. Despite all their murmurings and complainings in different situations, the Lord still proposed to give them that land. One more time, now, they were to manifest faith in God and in His power to deliver them and to give them what He said He would give to them. And He wanted to test them again. The Lord said unto Moses, Numbers 13, reading from verse 1, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men, 
that they may search the land of Canaan which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. So Moses took one person for every tribe, for the twelve tribes, the heads of them. Among these people were Caleb from the tribe of Judah and Joshua from the tribe of Ephraim and the remaining ten. And they went to spy the land. Now reading Numbers chapter 13 verse 17 it says, And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, Get you up this way southward and go up into the mountain and see the land what it is. And the people that dwelleth therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many. And what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and what cities that de- and what cities they be that they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds, and what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not, and be ye of good courage and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zin unto Rehob as men come to Hamath. And they ascended by the south and came unto Hebron, where Ahiman, Sheshai, and Talmah, the children of Anak, were. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. And they came unto the brook of Eschol, and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they bare it two upon a staff. And they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. The place was called the brook of Eschol, because of the cluster of graves which of the children which the children of Israel cut down from thence. And they returned from searching of the land after forty days, and they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us. And surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled, and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. This was the report that these spies brought the ten of them brought this report unto the children of israel now how do we apply this lesson to ourselves before the children of israel are going into canaan there is something that the lord there was something the lord wanted them to do which is to spy the land and for us today we are on our journey to canaan and many are asking the question and are searching the land to see whether it is possible to enter into it they are studying their bibles like the children that the the 12 spies went 40 days studying the land to see whether we can possess the land and what is the report that we hear what has the lord said and what are the ten spies saying are they saying the same thing in the book of revelation 22 god has told us to we are to spy the land and see what it takes because when the children of israel were going to spy the land they were not just trusting that the lord would just they would just enter there and then the lord would give them the land this was strategy here they were making uh going to spy the land so that they can know what they are going to come up against and strategize to see how they are going to fight and take that place and so they needed to know what kind of uh, place are we going to are they walled cities or are they dwelling in tents um what kind of people are they are they strong or are they weak these in, this information was supposed to help them plan we learn a lesson from here that god doesn't work without order he plans and we are to plan But then, whatever we see there, we are to still bring it to God and find out what is the requirement. That's what they were supposed to do with this information. They were supposed to find out what is the requirement for entering into that land. How are we going to plan ourselves? What are we supposed to do before we get into that place? Because this information they got will help them know, okay, now I've seen what the land is. Therefore, this is what I am supposed to do. We also have seen the land, the kingdom of God. And what is it like? The people there are angels. They are children of God, sons of God. God himself is there. And therefore, we are told 
that for us to enter into there, there's something we also need to do. Jesus himself in the book of Revelation 22, reading verse 13 to 15, said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city for without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie so we are also spying the land and we have seen the land oh here it is that jesus himself is dwelling there angels holy angels are there therefore only those who do his commandments will have right to the tree of life which is the whole point of our purpose on this earth we lost eternal life we are trying to get it back we are spying the land and we are seeing that in order for us to have eternal life to eat of that tree of life jesus said in revelation 22 verse 14 blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life what was it that the people of israel were supposed to do they spy the land and there was something they were supposed to do which is to plan in cooperation with god so that they can have right to that land we also we are told that we are to do his commandments again in first corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 and 10 we are told know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of god be not deceived neither fornicators nor idolaters nor adulterers nor effeminate nor abusers of themselves with mankind nor thieves nor covetous nor drunkards nor revilers nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of god we have spied the land and the, these are the people that will not inherit it like we also read in revelation 22 verse 5 for without are dogs that's outside the city those who will not enter dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and make it a lie they will not enter but only those who do the commandments you see many look at this and look at their own lives they see oh only those who do the commandments will enter and then they feel like they are grasshoppers while the work the lord has asked them to do is a giant task in their mind this is the greatest part of unbelief that we face today the possibility of conquering our own giants which is our sins which if we do not conquer we cannot enter canaan the kingdom of god hebrews 12 verse 14 says follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord the rich young ruler wanted to inherit the kingdom he wanted to enter canaan and he came to meet jesus to ask him the requirement to spy the land and find out what do i need to do to enter this land matthew 19 reading from verse 16 to 17 says and behold one came and said unto them good master what good thing shall i do that i may have eternal life that is our canaan eternal life and he that jesus said unto him why callest thou me good there is none good but one that is god but if thou wilt enter into life again keep the commandments it is the same thing over and over again keep the commandments this is what we are supposed to do the 10 spies presented a bad report of their ability to enter canaan they didn't say that canaan is not good they said this is the fruit and it is true it is flowing with milk and honey but when we look at the people who are there the children of anak are there we cannot conquer them we cannot enter a similar unbelief is manifested just like that manifested by the 10 spies and the israelites and similar lies are told by the men of today just like the 10 spies what is the effect of these lies how do these lies affect people when we tell people that they cannot overcome their sins because this is the message that we are hearing today that we cannot take the land we cannot overcome our sins it's impossible to be perfect it's impossible to follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man can see the lord that is what people are saying they are lowering the standard and saying we cannot possess the land what is the effect of this kind of message it is the same effect of the message of the ten spies reading from numbers chapter 14 verse 1 to 5 it says and all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried and the people wept that night and all the children of israel murmured against moses and against aaron and the whole congregation said unto them would god that we had died in the land of egypt or would god that we had died in this wilderness and wherefore had the lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be a prey were it not better for us to return into egypt and they said one to another let us make a captain and let us return into egypt 
Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. You see what you see what happened here. This is the effect of a bad report and a, 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 a contradictory report also. The children of Israel had already done the Passover. That's one thing we need to understand. At what stage of their journey were the children of Israel here? Let us remember, they had first of all participated in the Passover, which represents their belief in the Savior who delivered them from Egypt, the beginning of their journey. But then they had not yet entered Canaan, just like us. Just because we have exercised faith and belief in Jesus as the Messiah doesn't mean we are saved. Then what again? They passed through the Red Sea, which is represented by baptism. So many of us have been baptized, but yet this was not enough for them to enter Canaan. It is not enough for us too. They needed works corresponding to their faith. Their lives needed to testify of their faith. To put it in better terms, I read from 1 Corinthians 10 verse 1 down to verse 5. It says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. This is the similar story for us. Many have gone through the belief in Jesus. They have baptized. They have tasted of the spiritual meat, the manna from God, the word of God. They have seen it. They have also drank the spiritual drink. They have internalized the lessons of God. But that is not enough. With many of them was not well pleased. They were overthrown. They did not finish the journey. And many will not finish the journey today because when they come closer to studying the word of God, which is to spy the land, and they see the requirements that the word of God goes to the innermost part of the belly, that it goes and divides asunder both the bone and marrow, and the requirements is that it wants a total transformation of character, that it is touching your dress, it is touching your food, it is touching your business, it is touching your life altogether. Some of them see it as a Herculean task. They look at these requirements as a giant that cannot be overcome and then they manifest unbelief. But they forget the promises of God and the deliverance, the mighty deliverance that the Lord has given them. But God has promised many things for us. He promised but yet many are murmuring and complaining that it is not possible to overcome. The Lord is not pleased with people who are giving this message because such messages will make people to say, let us have a captain for ourselves and go back to Egypt. How many there are today who have continued to dress in a wrong way because they keep saying, "Eh, our righteousness is as a filthy rag. The ten spies which are representing unfaithful ministers are telling the congregation that it is impossible to live a holy life. Therefore, the people feel there is no point trying. Let us just continue. After all, we cannot live a holy life. There is no point. All of us are sinners. Nobody will ever overcome. Therefore, I will dress the way I want. I will eat the way I like. I can tell lies sometimes. You know, nobody is righteous. I can cheat sometimes. I can also engage in adultery and then say, "Mm, wasn't David like that? It's not possible for anybody to live a holy life because that's what the ministers are saying. Therefore, people are going back to Egypt. They are making captains for themselves to go back to Egypt. They are not trying to enter Canaan anymore because the ten spies, the false ministers, are telling people, we be not able to take the land instead of pointing them to the word of god you see the lord is not pleased with such ministers even if we claim to believe in jesus and partake of the privileges and ordinances in the word and are baptized we will not see god's kingdom if like israel we manifest unbelief in god's power as we have as we see the giants in our lives we are not yet in canaan though we have left egypt we are not completely converted we are to continue the journey till the end and not talk of going back to egypt we have wonderful promises in the word of god to help us on our way telling us that it is possible jeremiah 31 reading from verse 31 down to verse 34 says behold the days come saith the lord that i will make a new covenant with the house of israel and with the house of judah not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, 
which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. Promises such as these, we are to exercise faith in them and not say we are not able to enter the land. God has promised that from the least to the greatest, all of us will know the Lord. And what does it mean to know the Lord? First John chapter 3, chapter 2, verse 4 says, Hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. And the Lord is promising that I will make everyone from the least to the greatest to know the Lord, which is to keep his commandments. Therefore, we'll be able to ent enter the land. But then there are ministers who are bringing false reports and saying we be not possible to take, we be not able to take the land. Also, we have another promise, Isaiah 1 verse 18 to 20. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow, though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it while. This is just alluding to what happened to the children of Israel. They were not willing and obedient, therefore they did not eat the good of the land. They refused, they rebelled, then they were devoured. The same thing will happen to us today. When the Lord is telling us, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man can see the Lord. When the Lord is telling us, blessed are they that do his commandments, for they shall have rights to the tree of life. When Jesus is telling us that if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments. And we are saying, we be not able. Since we are saying we are not able, we are refusing, we are rebelling, we are not willing, we are not obedient, therefore we will not eat the good of the land. But if you are willing and obedient, the Lord says, we will eat the good of the land. Like ancient Israel, many are bearing an evil report of the land that the Lord has promised for us, both in the sense of the possibility of acquiring it and also in the goodness of the land. They present the righteous life in such an, an unattractive way that makes others to choose to continue in a life of sin. Some people want to paint heaven as a boring place. They come back with reports and say, I don't want to be there. There's no joy in that place. That is the 10 spies talking once again, which makes people to not even make effort to go into the land. They give testimonies, lame testimonies. You see all these pictures that they paint of little children as if they are drunk, lying down in the skies naked or wearing just napkin and holding a harp those pictures paint heaven as though it is a place of a do nothing nobody is going to explore everybody is just going to be lazying about false pictures of heaven and also painting the, the worst picture that is painted is the one where we are told that we are not able in other words we don't have the capability to conquer the giants what are these giants our defects of character our sin that doth so easily beset us. They are saying, we be not able. These are the 10 spies today. There are many of them all over the world telling people we be not able. But there are testimonies from the word of God which are as the pomegranates and grapes and the figs that assure us that the land is good. They brought back good reports from the land telling us that the land is good and we are able but yet they contradicted themselves while bringing those good things said that they were not able to conquer. That was a contradiction and today ministers are con contradicting themselves. They will say with God all things are possible and then they will say oh it is not possible to overcome. Is that not a contradiction? They will point to the life of people like Job and yet say we are not able. We have the figs and pomegranates and grapes for us. There is hope of conquering as long as we exercise faith. Faithful Caleb's are testifying that it's possible. Men like Enoch who walked with God and was so close to God that God took him and the, and the Bible testifies of him that he pleased God. That's Hebrews 11 verse 5. This story of Enoch is like a fig brought from the land of Canaan telling us that it is possible. Job, of whom the Bible says that he was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil, Job chapter 1 verse 1, he is also testifying as a fig brought from the land of Canaan that it is possible. Daniel, who had an excellent spirit and was called a man greatly beloved by heaven, 
Daniel chapter 10 verse 11. This is testifying to us, it is possible. John the Baptist, filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb, his parents, who the Bible testifies were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Luke chapter 1 verse 6, they are as the pomegranates in the land of Canaan, telling us this is the report, it is possible. And just in case you are thinking, oh, these people are all righteous people, then what about the life of the patriarchs? Simeon, who was a violent terrorist, Judah, who was a, an adulterer, Reuben, who was a strange kind of adulterer, sleeping with his father's concubine, and the rest of the brothers, even Levi, violent people and wicked people. Were they not overcomers? The patriarchs, the life of the patriarchs are as pomegranates and grapes, telling us that no matter how much giants we have to conquer, the land is good and it is possible to overcome. Among the sweetest of grapes we find in Canaan stands the wonderful conversion of people like King Manasseh and King Nebuchadnezzar, men who had characters of the worst kind and yet were able to see the land and had a true conversion experience. These are perhaps the sweetest of pomegranates and grapes, testifying to us of the goodness of the land and the possibility of conquering our sins. But in spite of the testimony of these fruits, many still manifest unbelief in God's power to save to the uttermost all that come to God through Jesus. Are we doing well to manifest this kind of unbelief? Why were the Israelites unable to enter Canaan? They lacked faith in God's power to save. Caleb and Joshua tried to inspire faith in them by pointing them away from themselves to the power of God, but they wouldn't listen. So also today, rebellious Christians, in the face of all these evidences, listening to the ten spies who give the contradictory evil report concerning the kingdom of God. We read it here, Numbers 4, 14, verse 6 to 9. And Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes, and they spake on, unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land, and give it to us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us, their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us, fear them not. You see, these words failed to inspire faith in them, because the ten spies crowded jo Joshua and, uh, and Caleb and said it is, a, it is a lie, it is not possible. So also we read magazines, tracts, sermons all over telling people it is not possible when the faithful Caleb's today are telling people it is possible. These words of Joshua and Caleb, they did not inspire faith in the people, rather they wanted to kill those who tried to inspire faith in them today also. The preachers who preach holiness as both a criteria and a possibility are maligned and cried down as false preachers who are trying to lay upon men an impossible burden. This is how they are looked at. Why is it that the children of Israel could not enter? A lack of faith. They were looking at themselves. They were not looking at the power of God. Hebrews chapter 4 reading verse 1 and 2 tells us, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. When Moses, Joshua, Caleb, Aaron preached unto the children of Israel, telling them it is possible, they heard it, but it did not profit them. Why? It was not mixed with faith. What is faith? Faith is to hear the word of God and believe it. The Lord had told them, I will do it, but they did not believe. They manifested doubt. They were looking at themselves. Unbelief made them to not believe, not to enter into Canaan. We must exercise faith in God's word and his power to save. It didn't matter how inexperienced or how weak or how small the children of Israel were. Neither does it matter how weak you are or how inexperienced you are. They were able to conquer because, as Joshua and Caleb said, the Lord is able to give us the land and also their defense. Canaan, their defense is gone from them. 
Jesus has already defeated the devil. His defense is gone from him. When we paint a gloomy picture of the land and the possibility of a conversion and a holy life, it is the same thing as bringing a contradictory report of the land. What does what is the re- true report in the word of God? First John chapter 3 verse 8 and 9. Hear the true report. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. Jude 1 verse 24. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. This is the true report here. Firstly, we saw in 1 John 3 verse 9 that whoever has Christ abiding in him will certainly conquer. The contradictory report is to claim that, oh, Jesus is capable of all things. Oh, they will say he's omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscience. But when they say, can he help you conquer your sins? They will say, no, it's not possible for us to overcome. Why? Why is it not possible? I thought you said with all things it is all things are possible with God. What of the testimony of of Joshua, uh, of um, Daniel and Enoch and John the Baptist and the children of Israel, uh, Jacob's children and Jacob himself? Did they not overcome? Why then are we telling people that it is not possible to overcome sin? Why then are we telling people it is not possible to be perfect when the Lord said, "Be ye perfect, for I am perfect." When the Lord Himself testified of. Zechariah and Elizabeth and also of Daniel and also of Job that they were perfect. Is that not a contradictory report? Here once more, furthermore, more testimonies from the word of God. Hebrews 7 verse 5. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make it intercession for them. Wow, hear that. He is able to save them. He is able. Are we able to take the land? Yes, like Joshua and Caleb saw it. They were not trusting in themselves. They were looking to God and saying, God is able to give us the land. Here, Hebrews 7 verse 25, He is able to save us. Save us from what? From our sins. Matthew 1 verse 21, You shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. How much will he save his people from their sins? Some of their sins. Is Jesus not able to save us from all our sins? Why are we manifesting unbelief? It is because we are looking to ourselves. We feel, oh, it is impossible for man to overcome. For some, they are just deceiving themselves. And because they want to continue their sins and hide under the cloak that it is possible with it is impossible with men. Yes, it is impossible with men. But the word of God is clear. It is possible with God. So if anybody does not overcome, it is not because it is not possible, but because they do not exercise a faith in God that is necessary. Another promise, Ezekiel 36, verse 25 to 28, it says, Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. And you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. Once again, we see God using the analogy of cleansing us from our sins as the criteria for us to dwell in the land. Here the Lord is saying, I will put my spirit within you. I will take away your heart of stone. I will give you a new heart of flesh. And after I have done this, I will cause you to walk within my statutes. I will give you my spirit. Then you will dwell in the land. That is the criteria for dwelling in the land today. And it is possible. Do not listen to the ten spies who are telling you it is impossible for you to overcome. It is possible. All things are possible with God. The word of God is filled with promises telling us it is possible. But when we listen to the ten spies and continue in our sins, saying it is not possible, I cannot have dress reform in my life, I cannot practice health reform, I cannot keep the commandments of God, I must sin. Somehow I'm a human being, I must sin. When we say that, we insult God. We insult Him terribly. 
the ten spies insulted God by manifesting unbelief. By giving this contradictory report, they were not just mistrusting themselves, but were virtually saying, Yes, I know God parted the Red Sea. I know he sent ten mighty plagues to Egypt. I know he rained manna from heaven and brought water for us from the rock. But I have assessed the land of Canaan and compared it to the power of God. And we have concluded that God's power is no match for the children of Anak, the Amalekites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, and the Jebusites. They spoke as if God did not know who was dwelling in the land in the first place. Since the days of Abraham, God had already said it. Genesis 15, Genesis 15 from verse 18 to 21. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites and the Kenizzites and the Cadmonites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Rephaims and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Gigashites and the Jebusites. God knew the challenges that Israel were going to face and he also knows our various struggles and promises deliverance. We are not to magnify our sins above the heavens as if God does not have power to help us power to help us overcome. When we do this, we cannot insult God any greater. Because in the face of the devil, you are saying that God is not powerful to conquer him. Who is the originator of sin? We read it in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, that it is Satan is the one who is the originator of sin. But when Christ is in you and you say it is not possible to overcome, then what are you doing? You are actually saying that it that God is not as powerful as the devil that the devil is more powerful than him. What an insult. The Lord who eventually helped Israel with his mighty hand to enter into Canaan is able to help us overcome every giant temptation in our lives. Faithful is he who has called us who also will do it. Like Joshua and Caleb, we are to trust in God's power and not in the weakness of our flesh. No miracle was ever wrought by man trusting to his own strength. Is it not God who who works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure? Will he then not finish the work he has started in our lives? Is he unable to conquer sin in men's lives? What an insult to heaven to present sin as so huge a task that even Jesus dwelling in us through the powerful Holy Spirit cannot help us overcome. What an insult. We insult God when we say that it is not possible that God dwelling in us cannot help us to overcome. My brothers and sisters, we are on the borders of Canaan, like we have read in Ezekiel 36. Unless God gives us his spirit and calls us to walk in his statutes, we cannot dwell in the land. Like we read in Isaiah 1 verse 18 to 20, Jesus himself is saying to us, let us reason together. If your sins are scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. If they are red as crimson, they will be as wool. But we have a condition, if you be willing and obedient. Take note, God is alluding again the overcoming of sin to the possession of the land. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you rebel, then what will happen? You will perish. That's what he says. You will be consumed. So the Lord is telling us today, have you been listening to those messages telling you like the ten spies that it is not possible to possess the land? In other words, we cannot have victory over sin. Because you see victory over sin, it is in the Bible, Isaiah 1, Ezekiel also, Ezekiel 36, we see in these two places that victory over sin is connected to the possessing of the land. Also in Revelation 22, we read it there that in keeping the commandments of God, that is when we eat the tree of life. So, do not listen to the ten spies who are telling you, yes, it is not possible. Let us go back to our sins. Let us go back to Egypt. Stop trying. You are wasting your time. You will never get it. Do not listen to the ten spies. If you listen to them, then what happened to the children who listened to the ten spies, the children of Israel, will happen to you. Let us be the few Josephs and Caleb's. In conclusion, we read in Hebrews 4 verse 1 and 2, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, I pray that you will inspire faith in us, that as we see our sins that doth so easily beset us, 
as we see how unconverted we are and as we see the high calling that you are giving to us in order for us to enter into the heavenly Canaan that we will not be afraid we will not despair because we trust in you forgive us Lord for our unbelief in the past forgive us Lord for listening to the ten spies who are telling us that victory over sin is impossible forgive us Lord for even giving those messages too I pray Lord that from henceforth we will manifest that faith of Joshua and Caleb and say we be able open our eyes dear Lord to see that defend the defense of Satan is gone from him and that you can give us the land help us Lord to exercise this faith increase our faith O Lord that we may put down our sins and overcome all of it in Jesus name we pray Amen.